Hello, sunshines! I am so excited. You know what has happened, crazy rich Asians. And next to me is none other than the person who sang the theme song and a cover version of Coldplay's Yellow, Catherine Ho. How are you? I'm so good. Thank you so much for taking the time to interview me. It's such an honor. No, it's an honor to, to meet you. Um, and it was so funny trying to schedule this interview because you were like, I'm about to start school. And I'm like, oh, this girl is so young. You've accomplished so much. So can you just tell the viewers a little bit about who you are um, and what you're doing on the campus of USC? Yeah, so I just started my sophomore year of USC, and it like last week was my first week. So yeah, um, right now I'm currently a biology major, and I'm minoring in songwriting. Um, I'm definitely like passionate about both fields. It's the biology thing is definitely not something my parents are forcing on me as like the Asian stereotype tends to be. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just like so grateful that I'm able to pursue like two things that I love um, at USC, and yeah, super just excited for the future and just like learn as much as I can while I'm here. So yeah, that's what I'm up to right now. Awesome. And we just uh, learned that this is the exact room that you recorded your demo for Yellow for John yeah. and Chu. Is that correct? Yeah, this is actually like the exact room. Um, I just basically came to my old freshman dorm. I live in a dorm called Parkside Arts and Humanities. So uh, we have like three practice rooms that we can use if we like get a key for it. So yeah, I was just like, hey, um, I know I'm not a resident here anymore, but like I kind of have a special excuse to be here. I was wondering if I could use the old room and yeah, just like, I don't know, I wasn't expecting to feel so nostalgic, like coming back to where I like recorded the thing and just like where I spent my freshman year too. So it's really cool to like get this location for sure. Absolutely. Well, I also think she let you because of how you said it and you're so, <laughs> she's so sweet and just, you're so unassuming and you're just such, such a humble person, but has things changed ever since coming back and do people know who you are or that you had a um, connection with Crazy Rich Asians? Yeah, it's definitely been like really, I don't know, I was not expecting people to like reach out to me after the movie, just like random strangers, like telling them that it made them cry or like it was like the first time that they thought the Mandarin language was beautiful. Like I totally was not expecting people to resonate emotionally with the song. I was like, okay, it'll complement the last scene well and I'm going to be super proud of it regardless. But yeah, it's been crazy. Like I have the best friends and family they've been so supportive I've dragged a lot of them to see Crazy Rich Asians but all of them <laughs> love the movie and yeah I'm just like overwhelmed with gratitude for everyone right now so yeah awesome and how many times have you watched Crazy Rich Asians already Ooh, okay uh this is a little embarrassing but I watched it five times already um two, yeah <laughs> I watched two times like before the the movie came out just for like various screenings or premieres and then I watched uh three times with like friends and family so yeah I, I mean honestly I could watch it a sixth time it's so good I still like watch the trailer for fun sometimes because I just like I love the movie so much and I just have to get your reaction because you're 19 correct yeah. 19 watching the movie and then all of a sudden during the most pivotal moment without too much spoilers for those of you <laughs> who haven't seen it your song comes on and what was that feeling like just being in the theater and just hearing your song come on during like two pivotal moments in that movie that really honestly the soundtrack made the movie as well as the brilliant yeah. cast and crew but what was that feeling like yeah it was definitely like really surreal I was like super like my heart was beating like really <laughs> fast I don't know if it's because of the plot of the movie or just like me also just anticipating it but yeah I just it was such a like a surreal moment because like I've auditioned for a lot of things in my life and like like done jobs where like I like could do like a perfectly good job but they, it would just get cut for whatever reason so I'm definitely like used to like the disappointment of the cutting board but like I was just so excited that like first of all it didn't get cut and second of all that it was used for like such a like emotional scene so it was definitely like a really special moment for me. Absolutely and can you explain how this whole thing got started? I know that John M. Chu graduated from USC so there's a connection there but in terms of seeking you out and um, how did the whole process happen that you were selected to 
to be the one who sings this song in Mandarin. Yeah, um, so it was kind of out of the blue, but um, basically I've been attending a summer camp called Acapella Academy. Um, it's definitely like one of the most life-changing experiences I've had. I went uh, for three summers in high school and then, um, yeah, I just learned a ton about music and life and just met the most humble and incredible people. And um, one of the, uh, like after the camp, I still like kept in contact with like the staff and the directors through, uh, I'm in a caroling group called Snowfall and we basically um, do like professional caroling gigs throughout the winter time. So I kept in touch with like the directors through that. And um, one day, uh, maybe like two or three weeks after our caroling season had ended, um, my uh, one of the directors, Ben Bram, he arranges and manages Pentatonic. So I respect <laughs> him a lot. And then he just texted me and was like, hey, Catherine, like, can you sing in Mandarin? And like, I just want to submit you for an, a TV film project. I don't really know what it's for. But obviously, I was very excited to say yes. And I've been singing Mandarin since I was like five years old, just because or I don't know if I, I've been participating in my city's Lunar New Year Festival since oh, I was okay. five. So every year I either like sing or dance in Chinese. And yeah, just like growing up in a Chinese household, we hear like Chinese music all the time. So I was like super excited to take this opportunity. Um, I It was like the beginning of the semester. So I don't know, even though I was excited to take it, I was almost like not going to just because like I had so much going on with school and stuff. But I was like, no, like when Ben Bram reaches out to you, like you don't <laughs> you say do it. Yeah. And like I was so excited. So I was just like, yeah, I don't know what it's for. But um, so I ended up just saying yes. And then he uh, got me in con uh, connection with the uh, vocal contractor for the film CRA. And then um, it was a very quick turnaround. I guess they were like on a very tight schedule. But um, basically they wanted a demo of Yellow by like the next morning. Oh so yeah, it was pretty crazy uh so i not knowing what it was for i just like they sent me the lyrics and like the demo the demo is actually um based like my version is based on a cover done on the voice of china by li wen chi and the original song is by um jung jun so i was listening to that a lot listening to other covers to like get a feel of the style and stuff and um yeah i recorded it here i remember my dad was on the phone with me really late just helping me with like pronunciation and dialect and just like the whole like emotion of the song because like i like I don't know for me like it's just so important to me to like really get the emotion and the lyrics like you can sing something technically perfect but like it's really just about like what it means to you and like what the what the songwriter had in mind and stuff so we spent a long time talking and then I was so tired I actually fell asleep like right on this piano <laughs> I like just laid my head I fun fact I can fall asleep anywhere so I was so tired um but I would practice a bit I fell asleep and then I woke up the next morning and practiced a few more hours and then and just like submitted it right before class so I didn't really think much was gonna come of it but um yeah like a few days passed and then I didn't really hear back so I was like okay it's just like another audition I'll move mm -hmm. on from this and then the vocal contractor uh contacted me at like 10 p.m randomly when I when I was doing homework and then he said that I got the job and like I still didn't know what it was for at the time mm -hmm. I guess they had to keep it like under NDA. disclosure yeah, yeah stuff like that <laughs> so yeah but I was excited regardless I called my parents and then and we recorded it like a few days later so I think like the text was January 25th and the recording was like the first of February so it was all like very quick so wow, that yeah is super quick yeah okay. so that's like kind of how it all happened and then yeah at the recording session they or like an hour before they told me that it was for crazy rich asians and i like totally lost it because <laughs> um like constance Wu is like my total idol as like an activist and a like an actress she's just like so dedicated to her craft so i really admire that about her and um yeah, I love her on Fresh Off the Boat. And when I saw she was like a part of this new film called Crazy Rich Asians, I kind of like had been following it for the past like year since she had like started, she had announced her commitment. So like when I heard it was for like that project, I like, I was so nervous to go in. I almost wish they like hadn't told me until totally like after. afterwards or something. But yeah, it was really surreal just like getting to work with the amazing music producers at Math Club too. Um, Cheap Shot is a... Uh, a gem and it was super cool and John even stopped by for a little bit Aww. to like just like facilitate and John and Gabe too the music supervisor so yeah they were there and it was so cool getting to meet them like these like musical giants and like obviously John um, is doing so much for Asian American like he's really like 
a pioneer in so many ways. So um, I'm really like grateful I got to meet him. I don't know if I made the best first impression because I was so nervous. <laughs> but yeah, it was really cool. And the session lasted like like um, the whole night, maybe like four or five hours. And it was like, I love being in the studio. It's like one of my favorite places where like I just, I'm usually like, pretty shy and introvert in real life. But like, I feel like once I'm locked in that like little booth, like I can just be whoever I want. So yeah, and I love the song that I sang too, like too. It's a Mandarin twist on one of my favorite Western songs. So the whole experience was just like super special. And my dad got to be there with me too Aww. at the session as like a dialect coach. So it was like really good vibes all around. That is just such an incredible story. And thank you for yeah. sharing the whole process because it was just like, it, it felt like it happened so suddenly. And we we're like, who are these amazing singers on this soundtrack who really are like other the another character besides Singapore being like a huge character? It's like the music was very much a character in this movie as well. Thank you. Um, Speaking of dialect, I yeah. printed out the lyrics, and awesome. I was wondering yeah. if you can help um, the audience, because I know that um, Coldplay's version, Yellow, was not exactly translated in Mandarin word for word. Mm -hmm. um, so I was hoping you can give us a little yeah, lesson. Sure. <laughs> um, I, I, my best. I have the traditional uh, Chinese characters, but I'm going to do pinyin. Okay, yeah, that's what I'm more comfortable with. <laughs> okay, too, good. So, yeah. Okay. So just just first off, the title was yellow, but in Mandarin it was like Lu Xing, which yeah, means Lu Xing. it means like shooting star or meteor. Okay, so we're just gonna go quickly line by line. Um, I guess like if you can kind of say slash sing yeah, slash um, sure. do that, that would be awesome. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So I can say it so that you guys can get like the real tones because in the singing it's all kind of one tone. But yeah, I'll try my best. Don't judge if my accent is a little funky, but it's. <laughs> 我想知道流星能飞多久,它的美丽是否值得去等候,值得去寻求. So basically that first section is like I want to know whether this shooting star or like this figure of beauty um, is real or not because um, and it, if whether or not it's worth it to chase. Um, I thought it was so beautiful how mm. they use like the metaphor of the shooting star. But yeah, I think it's like a love story, but also like there's a lot of risk and you're not sure if you can go for it. Yeah. So yeah, that's the first line. Okay. And then the second one is 夜空的花散落在你身后,幸福了我很久。uh, so the second verse is basically saying, um, yeah, I like fell into your, uh, or like the nighttime flowers in the sky, um, like scatter behind your shoulders. And um, that's like the moment that I realized that yes, like it is risky, but like I'm going to go for it. So like that's like kind of, I feel like there's like definitely an arc to this song mm -hmm. where like in the beginning it's more vulnerable. And then like this young girl like gains confidence throughout the song. Like, and yeah. Yeah, so then that's that section. And it comes full force in the moment that the song is revealed, and it's just like going for it at yeah. that moment, just mm -hmm. fighting for what you want and believe in, and just having that confidence in yourself that you can do anything. Yeah. Um, so this, oh yeah, it's like now that you're translating it, it's <laughs> like, oh my gosh, it just opens up a new meaning for, yeah. for the song in that moment. For sure. Okay, so I guess I'll keep going. So, 于是我心狂奔从黄昏到清晨不能再承受 so basically, this girl is saying, um, my heart is beating so fast uh, from dawn till dusk, and I like I can't hold back any longer. So it's just like getting closer and closer to like her like real self realization. So yeah, oh I know it's so beautiful, it's so beautiful, <laughs> and really you know is. this is why I want you to explain it because I <laughs> took some Chinese classes growing up, and it's like there's no alphabet and there's no like direct literal translation, and there's some words in um, um, English that just can't be translated in Chinese yeah. so it's just it's just the beauty of a story of a word it says more than just that word yeah for sure okay so then um, this is now like the pre-chorus so so this part is basically saying um, like more just like um, really awesome imagery but like I'm falling into your arms now and like the dark night is turning into like like a rainbow so yeah it's kind of <laughs> cheesy but like the sentiment is like really beautiful yeah yeah and then the next part is so yeah it's basically saying um, like the night is changing into like a beautiful moonlight breeze so yeah the whole pre-chorus section is just like the transition from like night to day kind mm. of so yeah 
And then um, the next part is like the iconic moment. Uh, this is the chorus. Yeah, it's like the like the one you you're gonna like belt out in your shower curtains. But <laughs> it's like um, 幸福跳进你的河流，一直游游到尽头，跳进你的河。And that repeats obviously a lot of times. But it's basically saying、um, I'm so happy. I like. Uh, like I dived into your river, so like I like I took the chance on you, and、um, now that I'm in it, I'm gonna like see it through to the very end. So I I don't know, it just like fits the movie really well. Like I'm getting chills just like talking、Aww. about it. Yeah. So it, like the this part is really just the moment where you realize that like、um, like what your decision was worth it, and like even though there's gonna be troubles along the way, like you're gonna see it to the very end. So yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> so that is good. Just so beautiful knowing now exactly what those words mean, and that the. Last one is the same thing as the first line. Yeah,、okay. exactly. Oh, <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, and of course. Have you? Did you grow up? Like, tell me a little bit more about how we identify in in this way. It's so Chinese American. So you speak, but bi- you're bilingual. You yeah, I'm. I think、uh, I can understand Chinese very well because my parents speak it to me. But I like tend to respond in English. I know it's like a kind of a weird system, but my parents are also like really proficient English because like they came here when they were. Like for graduate school,、mm-hmm. so、um, yeah, we kind of have like a weird system, and sometimes I'll say stuff like certain, like you said, there's some words in Chinese I don't have an English translation,、yeah. so I'll throw in, I'll sprinkle in a little bit of Mandarin here and there. But、um, yeah, I went to Chinese school every Saturday growing up from like ever since I was in kindergarten to high school. So I definitely like got a shout out to my like、um, my Chin- like local Chinese community for like giving <laughs> me the foundation to like because like like I said, the turnaround for this was really fast. Like I definitely wouldn't have been able to like teach myself Mandarin、mm-hmm. in six days. So like it's just like all the experience and knowledge I built up at Chinese school definitely helped me out a lot here. Awesome, and we just have to talk about John M. Chu's letter <laughs> because this song wasn't even going to happen. I know Coldplay originally said no to the song because of the whole the idea that oh that might have racial undertones, but. Then John wrote this beautiful letter, and if you haven't、um, read it, I'll put the link below. But basically, like this letter of what it meant or what it would mean to basically reclaim the word "yellow," being called "yellow" as a derogatory term、um, and racial slurs, and just understanding how beautiful that song originally is and how it can be intended for the Asian American audience. So,、mm-hmm. I guess、um, in talking about that, like. That adds another layer of how much it means、yeah. to sing the song. So, was there like pressure? And what are your thoughts about that letter? And have you ever identified in the way that John has in regards to the term yellow? And there's a lot. There's、yeah. just a loaded Lots, question. Yeah. But <laughs> it's all good. Yeah. So,、um, I actually didn't know about、uh, the, like the meaning behind the like at the recording session.、Uh, he hadn't brought it up yet, but like when it came out on the press, like. I don't know. I was so touched when I read that letter, and to know that like there was like that big of a significance behind like the choice of the song. Yeah. So yeah, I definitely like it. Like really moved me to see how like like how f- hard he fought for this song, and like it's just so like honestly, he's such a powerful person. He can just use this like one song and change like the whole like connotation behind yellow. And、um, I just think it's like so poetic and beautiful, and not only in an abstract way, but I can definitely like relate to it. A lot myself too.、Um, like I was always like, like really proud of being Asian. Like I always did like all the culture festivals, and I always went to Chinese school. But、um, I guess like before. Like for lack of a better metaphor, like it was always just like oh like a cool Instagram post like hey I'm at the Lunar New Year festival in my city but like it never really like I don't know if like I was deeply proud、mm-hmm. of being Asian it was just like something that I thought was like a, a fact about me and then、um, I think after seeing this movie、um, or not I think but like definitely after seeing this、mm-hmm. movie it it really changed my perspective on what it means to be Asian American I feel so I've never like been more proud of like my identity and、um, it's just like growing. Growing up, I like a lot of my insecurities had to do with me being Asian American. Like I, I'm fortunate enough. I don't feel like I've ever been like blatantly, like I've never experienced like blatant racism. But、mm-hmm. like I always just felt like more shy because I wasn't like the dominant culture. I feel like I always had to like justify myself. Like、mm-hmm. oh, like like I'm Asian, so like, but like I'm also like. Like I love music too, but like I don't know. I feel like it was definitely a source of my insecurities, but as well as a source of pride. But I feel like now I'm definitely shifting more in the pride direction, and I'm so like excited for like this movement that's going on, and just like that more Asian voices are gonna be heard. 
like in the coming years. So definitely like this letter and like this song means a lot to me. Absolutely. And I think they definitely picked the perfect person to do it. <laughs> and you. it's not just, yeah, you can be a great singer and everything, but you're, I can just tell by talking to you, and I'm sure the audience will agree, it's just like your heart is in the right place. It was oh, the perfect person to uh, pick to do this song. So I guess like outside of music and everything, like um, what is your passion? What are you doing? And like hobbies, like give me something, tell the audience okay. things <laughs> that they wouldn't know about you. Okay. Um... Let's see. I am a huge foodie. I love like anything sugary. So like, uh, like one of my favorite things is just like go out to food plates with my friends and family. So a uh, huge like ice cream fan, everything. <laughs> so but I mean, who isn't? So and you're not lactose intolerant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually. I think I might be partially because my mom is lactose intolerant. Yeah. But um, so far I've been okay. And um, I also like play tennis. I played tennis in high school. It's like. Um, like just some like I don't play as much anymore but it's definitely like a part my my dad is like a super tennis fan so awesome. tennis was always in the house and stuff and then yeah I obviously like um I really like like I'm kind of a nerd I love sciences like right now I'm majoring in biology so um like genetics and molecular bio I think that stuff is so cool and um let's see what other hobbies um I don't know I guess I just I really like to just like hang I'm kind of an introvert so I guess I just like to be by myself a lot and like do like personal things so I guess that's another fact about me but yeah that's so cool and you have to tell me we were talking earlier because you know how the Asian stereotype is like do good in school do school stuff like be a doctor lawyer but it was very opposite for you in your household yeah it was I tried it like a lot of people have asked like oh is the is the biology thing like like your parents wanting you to be pre-med and it's actually like kind of the opposite like um growing up my parents always like wished the best for me but they were always like oh you should do music like that's like what like we think is like best for you and then I feel like in high school I almost kind of like rebelled against that I was like oh like well my parents want me to do music so I'm gonna do something like <laughs> like non-music so I don't know I feel like now we're both like on the same page of like just like choose whatever like makes me happy and like what I feel like the most genuine with so like my parents are definitely super supportive my music not at all like um pressuring me to do the biology if anything pressuring me to do like the opposite <laughs> so yeah I'm like I have really great relationship with my parents I'm really lucky to like have their support and everything amazing so what is next I mean like how can we support and uh, yeah like is it music something that you want to pursue as well I know you're doing biology but with this whole motion uh, major motion picture film happening and your name attached to it like I guess yeah in your mind like what is next yeah, I mean, I've been asking myself that a lot, too, and I'm kind of, like, scared because I don't know. I'm definitely, like, one thing I really want to work on personally is just um, writing more of my own original material because, like, I have written stuff in the past, but it's always been, like, only, like, when I'm inspired to do it, which is, like, few and far between. But I really want to make it a priority this semester to, like, put out more original content. Um, so that's, like, also why I'm, like, I want to declare a minor in songwriting. So I'm taking, like, a lot of songwriting and music classes this semester, and yeah, right now I have like a YouTube channel. So I guess my goal is just like be posting more on YouTube and um, yeah, just like seeing where life takes me, I guess. So um, just I, I just feel so grateful to be doing both right now, but definitely just like taking all the music opportunities they can get, like performing more, joining a lot of clubs on campus. So yeah, that's like my foreseeable future. Sorry, nothing like album dropping or anything, but <laughs> I'm working on it. But I love it. It's very like humble beginnings, but with a huge twist already. <laughs> oh Is God. there anything that you'd like to say to John, to the cast, basically to the fans mm -hmm. um, for Crazy Rich Asians? Just anything that you would like to personally say to the audience? Yeah, of course. Um, first of all, John, like, thank you so If you're watching this, <laughs> hey, first of all. But, like, thank you so much for giving me this opportunity and trusting me with, um, like, such a special part of the movie and um like i honestly i'm so glad i got to meet you at the recording session and like thank you so much for what you do like i'm sure like you you know this but like you're really revolutionizing what it means to be um asian american not only in like the media but also just as a person like you've elevated my confidence so much and a lot of my friends have like really resonated with the movie my asian american friends and um yeah and thank you just like not just the representation but just for making like such an amazing film in general that everyone can relate to and enjoy i think you did like such a great job of balancing um 
like the whole representation with just like a universal feel good love story that like teaches you a lot so thank you for what you do and um i guess to like everyone who sent me like private message or just like reached out to me uh thank you so much i like literally i screenshot almost everything like i have a ton of screenshots but like if you've ever reached out like i've seen your message and like it just means the world that I don't I feel like my whole life I've been kind of like the invisible kid like Aww. I don't really like I mean yeah like I don't know I just didn't think people would ever like like notice my singing or my my art so I'm just like so grateful to anyone who's like ever like reached out and um you definitely like um are making me reconsider just like like I I don't know I realize I should be more confident in my own abilities just yes. like hearing your yes. comments <laughs> and um I don't know. Uh, I guess to like thank you to Ben, my acapella director. Like I wouldn't have gotten this without you. I know I've told you thank you so many times offline, but um, and shout out to Acapella Academy. Like that's where I like really found who I was as an artist and like met the most cool people and is the reason why um, I got this job. And yeah, and obviously my parents too. Like. Like, I already r raved about them a lot, but I love you guys so much. And, like, thank you, Nikki. Okay. This is my first, like, on-camera interview. So, You're doing yeah. so great <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah, just a lot of gratitude all around. Yeah. This is amazing. And I have to – this is a, such a huge testament because it's – I just want you to – like, you're so pure and amazing, and I just don't want that to change. I ask this question all the time about who they want to thank, and you just think, <laughs> thank you. But this girl had a oh. whole, like, <laughs> boom. Yeah. And, you know, it's just the gratitude that – that goes into it and it's just I want you to continue doing whatever makes you happy and passionate but if you continue to sing I'm sure everybody would love that yeah. maybe more of uh, songs and covers in Mandarin because just seeing mm -hmm. it translated in such a beautiful way I'm sure I speak on behalf of everybody that we want more of that oh, thank um, you. but thank you so much for your time here and I look forward um, and is there any uh, shout out to USC yeah of course <laughs> like thank you USC for first of all the facilities to record but also like I've just been having the greatest time here like I've met some of my best friends here so like super grateful to be in LA in this beautiful city beautiful campus so yeah awesome well thank you so much yeah thank you Nikki yeah. hi I'm Catherine Ho and I sing yellow for the film crazy rich Asians and you're watching Nikki's son if you didn't know now you know See